and friends, please rise for the faculty of the University of Georgia. Graduates, families, and friends, the Grand Marshal and party of the President of the University of Georgia. Good morning. The University of Georgia welcomes the members of the class of 2022 and their families and friends to this fall's undergraduate commencement ceremony. Here at the birthplace of public higher education in America, we are proud to celebrate the accomplishments of our outstanding students with all of you today. Please remain standing for the presentation of the flag of the United States of America and the flag of the state of Georgia to be followed by our national anthem. The colors will be presented by cadets from the University of Georgia Air Force ROTC unit. The national anthem will be led by Brooks Joseph Todd, a vocal performance major and a member of the class of 2023. Following the national anthem, please continue standing for the invocation to be offered by Jeremy Listig, campus director of UGA Hillel.
so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the home of the brave Thank you to the University of Georgia, President Moorhead, the commencement team, and anyone else I'm forgetting for inviting me to offer these words for the invocation in honor of this winner's graduates. Graduation marks the ending of one education and the beginning of another. In this moment, the words from the past ring true. Knowledge is built on the lessons we have already learned. As the book of Proverbs says, for through wisdom, your days will increase and years will be added to your life. May the yearning for education you have nurtured while working towards this degree become a lifelong journey, a journey that leads each of you to empower and grow the communities for which you choose to be a part. Rabbi Hillel used to say, if I am not for me, who will be for me? And when I am for myself alone, what am I? And if not now, then when? Now is the time to use your knowledge on the next part of your journey. Thank you and congratulations, graduates. Everyone, please be seated. <clears throat> thank you, Brooks, and thank you, Jeremy. I want to also thank the UGA Wind Ensemble for this morning's music. We are truly grateful to the Hugh Hodson School of Music and director Peter Juris for providing us with such talented individuals. I also want to express my appreciation to the UGA Air Force cadets for presenting the colors and to the members of the Arts Society and many other volunteers for helping with this morning's ceremony. Today, we gather in this setting to formalize the accomplishments of the class of 2022. To our graduates, we recognize your hard work and dedication, your tenacity in overcoming challenges, and your commitment to the ideals of the University of Georgia. To the family members and friends in the audience, I want to take just a moment to express my appreciation to you for your patience and your perseverance. Our graduates could not have reached their goals without your support, so thank you. Graduates, I hope you will remember the relationships you formed with your classmates, advisors, professors, and many others that you met along the way during your time here. These relationships will become even more important to you in the future as you look back upon the profound influence they have had on your life. Remember the deep ties that bind us together, and remember that wherever you go throughout your life, you are a part of the UGA family. As a fellow alumnus, it is my honor to stand alongside you as a devoted member of the Bulldog Nation. 
Whatever your field, your UGA education has prepared you to use your knowledge to improve lives, strengthen communities, and indeed to change the world. You should be proud of what you've accomplished so far, but know that your work is just beginning. UGA alumnus, we do not rest on our laurels, nor do we forget the purpose of our education. We expect uncommon things of you because you are now a graduate of the University of Georgia. Congratulations. I now want to take a moment to recognize the members of the senior administration of the university who are here today. In their operational areas, they have made significant contributions to your education. I'll ask them to stand as their names are called and be seated once their row has been introduced. Audience, please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Dr. Jack Hu, the Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost. Mr. Ryan Nesbitt, the Vice President for Finance and Administration. Mr. Kelly Kerner, the Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations. Dr. Marissa Pagnatera, the Vice President for Instruction. Dr. Karen Berg, the Vice President for Research. Dr. Jennifer Frum, the Vice President for Public Service and Outreach. Mr. Victor Wilson, the Vice President for Student Affairs. Dr. Kathy Farr, the Vice President for Marketing and Communications and Chief of Staff to the President. Dr. Tim Chester, the Vice President for Information Technology. Dr. Michelle Cook, the Senior Vice Provost. Professor Usha Rodriguez, Interim Vice Provost for Academic Affairs, and Dr. Ron Walcott, the Vice Provost for Graduate Education and Dean of the Graduate School. Please join me in greeting these senior administrators. There are others on the platform who are not directly involved in this ceremony, but we're very pleased to have them with us today. Please hold your applause until all their names have been announced. Professor Luke Nair, Chair of the University Council Executive Committee and the Grand Marshal for today's ceremony. Dean Bo Rutledge of the School of Law. Dean Sonia Hurt of the College of Environment and Design. Dean Philip Hong of the School of Social Work, and Campus Dean Shelley Nuss of the Augusta University, University of Georgia Partnership. We are grateful for the leadership that they provide to this institution, and I know that they share in celebrating your accomplishments. Please join me in greeting these leaders. I will now call on Dr. Jack Hu, the Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost, to congratulate the first honor graduates for this commencement. Provost? Good morning, everyone. President Moorhead, it is my privilege to present 22 students who have maintained a 4.0 cumulative point, a grade point average on all work attempted at the University of Georgia, as well as college-level transfer work attempted prior to or following enrollment at the university. I want to call on Dr. Marisa Pagnaterio, Vice President for Instruction, to introduce the first honor graduates. Audience, please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Thank you. Devin Victoria Altman. Abigail Leanne Beckerroot, Peyton Michelle Bailey, Hannah Marie Buttshaw, Megan Riley DeRussia, Olivia Carolyn Eubanks, Logan Matthew Flynn, 
Alyssa Taylor Hansen, Isabel Rose Hutchinson, Cody Michael Langston, Molly Elizabeth Lee, Analia Elizabeth Lynch, Mary Michaela McSwain, Sydney Kelly Payne, Ayako Peterson Takayada, Owen Clay Reynolds, David Zachary Savinsky, Alexis Marie Smith, Timothy Michael Wargo, Grace Ann Elizabeth Waylock, Christina Gabrielle Wilcher, and Danielle Siler Williams. Congratulations. We commend those students for their high standard of personal excellence and for their outstanding achievement. We wish them well as they pursue their varied interests. The first honor graduates are sitting in the rows in front of the stage. Please join me once again to applaud and congratulate them for their families and their accomplishments. At this time, we would like to recognize those students who are graduating with honors. The, the distinctions are summa cum laude, accorded to students with a 3.9 GPA or higher, magna cum laude for those with a 3.75 to a 3.89 grade point average, and cum laude for those with a 3.6 to a 3.74 grade point average. Will those students graduating summa cum laude please rise for recognition? Thank you. Will those graduating magna cum laude please rise for recognition? Will those graduating cum laude please rise for recognition? Congratulations. At this time, I am pleased to call to the podium a member of the graduating class who will speak on behalf of his classmates. Michael Banks is graduating with bachelor's degrees in journalism and international affairs, along with minors in anthropology and business. He is an outstanding honor student who has been deeply engaged in a number of activities both on and off campus. During his time at the University of Georgia, he has held internships with the U.S. Department of State, the United Nations Foundation, and McKinsey and Company, among other organizations. Michael was named the Louis Grizzard Journalism Scholar by the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication. He also is a member of the William Tate Honor Society and was named to the 2021 UGA Homecoming Court. Please join me in welcoming Michael Banks. Thank you, President Moorhead. So I want to shed light on one of the smaller degree programs at UGA. And for those of you curious, it's not our 100% career placement poultry science program, nor is it our robust turf grass management department. It's classics. Classics, for those of you who may be less familiar, is the study of Greek and Roman civilizations and all that they encompass. It's everything from history and poetry to mythology and architecture and even anthropology, one of my minors, all through the lenses of ancient Greek and Latin, which I studied for about seven years before coming to Georgia. And while some might say that Latin and the classics are dead and obsolete, really, 
they're a foundation for many of the things that we are passionate about. Those of you planning to enter the healthcare profession will go on to take an oath that the physician Hippocrates penned to paper, or papyrus at the time, in Greek more than 2,000 years ago. Those of you that will go on to study law or practice business will be learning about philosophies and implementing economic frameworks that were established by Aristotle. And teachers, you will rely on pedagogies that in their original form probably came from Socrates. Classics continues to be a part of the world of today, and whether or not you were the kid who had the 12 labors of Hercules forced upon you in a high school lit class, or were the one who went through a robust Greek mythology phase, there are a couple of lessons we can learn from a couple of moments in the classics. Now, I can't stand up here and act like I have it all figured out, because I definitely don't. I'm only 22, and I'll be just as new to alumni life as all of you. But we can all do something that we've probably been doing throughout our entire time at Georgia. And if you don't listen to any other three words I say in this speech, please listen to these three. Fall in love. Now, whether or not you've met the person you'll someday marry, and it's fine if you haven't, I really don't think I have, there are three things to fall in love with as you navigate this next phase of life, similar to how you've mastered this one. The first is to fall in love with your process. Homer's Odyssey tells the fabled story of Odysseus's journey home to Ithaca after the Trojan War. On that journey, he got blown off course. He weathered storms. He faced countless monsters, and it took about 10 years before he saw his wife and son again. We are the class that had a pandemic blow our plans for our college careers off course. We are the class weathering the storm that is graduating in a recession, and we are a class that has overcome our own personal monsters to be here today. We are the class of resilience, which quite frankly, if I'm being honest, is a phrase that I'm sick of hearing. <laughs> but falling in love with the process means finding joy in the everyday work that allows us to overcome such obstacles. For those of you going straight into grad or professional school, Try to fall in love with the material you'll learn in those late nights studying. There's privilege in getting to continue your education and it speaks to your commitment as lifelong learners. Those of us that are entering our first jobs will have the once in a lifetime opportunity to bring fresh perspectives to establish teams and use skills that are a culmination of our journeys thus far. Whether you're someone who knows what the next 10 years look like or someone with no idea what they're gonna have for dinner tonight, find fulfillment in the work that is figuring it all out. The next is to fall in love with your friendships. Even if you're not familiar with the Third Servile War, where Roman servants joined together and fought the power, you're probably familiar with one of Hollywood's most famous phrases to come from it. I am Spartacus. Spartacus of Thrace was the name and the face of one of the major uprisings against the Roman Republic, but he was no one-man army. He was supported by his fellow gladiators and escaped servants who were willing to die alongside him for the sake of their cause. And whether it's an army of two or 200, you are walking out of this institution with friends and peers who have challenged your perspectives, fostered your learning, and nurtured your growth. Lean into those friendships that can only be formed over hours-long conversations in a UGA dining hall. Those bonds that only come from commiserating in the MLC at 2 a.m. And those moments of wisdom imparted from mentors, professors, and family throughout. Take pride in the fact that you are walking out of here today with peers who will go to bat for you in whatever challenges life may throw your way and will also be the first to celebrate you when life throws good fortune your way. The final thing to fall in love with is yourself. Now don't be Narcissus, a Grecian hunter who was so in love with himself that he did nothing but look at his reflection for the rest of his life, but instead choose to practice self-love in moments both high and low. You can say with almost certainty that everyone in this room has dealt with some form of doubt, insecurity, or imposter syndrome at some point in their college careers. And I don't know for certain, but I feel safe in saying that I don't think a degree makes those things magically go away. We will make mistakes as we transition into our new jobs, 
our new schools, our new cities, and our new roles. So let's not let those mistakes define us. In the coming days, weeks, and months, be sure to pause and celebrate yourself. After today, we will all have degrees from the birthplace of public higher education. No one's path to graduation day looks exactly the same, and no one's path after will either. So give yourself some grace moving forward and take pride in the person that gets to take on life after the arch. So, lessons in classics from the classic city herself. Fall in love with your process, fall in love with your friendships, and fall in love with the person behind it all, you. If you do all of that falling, then I think, just maybe, that the rest will fall into place. Congratulations, fall class of 2022, and for the last time as an undergraduate, go dogs. Thank you, Michael, for those remarks and for representing your class with such distinction. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our commencement keynote speaker, Mr. Chris Womack, the Chairman, President, and CEO of Georgia Power. Mr. Womack leads the company in serving its 2.6 million customers across the state. Georgia Power is the largest subsidiary of Southern Company, one of the nation's leading energy providers. A native of Greenville, Alabama, Mr. Womack joined Southern Company in 1988 and has held many leadership positions within the organization. Immediately prior to his current role, he served as Executive Vice President and President of External Affairs for Southern Company. Mr. Womack chairs the Board of Directors of the Alliance to Save Energy. He also is a member of the Boards of Essential Utilities Incorporated, Invesco Limited, the Georgia Ports Authority, the First Tee, and the Georgia Historical Society. He holds a bachelor's degree from Western Michigan University and a master's degree from American University, and he completed the Stanford University Executive Program in 2001. Please join me in welcoming a great leader and a wonderful friend of the University of Georgia, Chris Womack. Thank you, President Moorhead, for that very kind introduction. I stand before you today with, with great humility, with great hope, great excitement, and a little bit of intimidation because graduation speeches are kind of difficult because you never know what to say, but you, make, you do want to make sure you say it very quickly and get out of the way. But I do, and I thank you all for, for welcoming me here to celebrate with you today because this is, this is indeed an honor. To the University of Georgia faculty who keep this university on the cutting edge of, of research, innovation, education, and learning. To the staff who keep this place running even with when the world stops. To the parents, to the grandparents, to the family, to the friends who've helped these graduates, who've helped you get here today, and to you, the graduates, for getting yourselves to this day, congratulations. Congratulations to you all. Be proud of yourself. Be proud of what you've accomplished. For four, we're, for four years, give or take, you've cried the call of go dogs. Your time here, you've heard the ring of the chapel bell. And th though your better angels and hopeful parents begged you to open the books, you sometimes fell to the pull of the pub, whether it was walkers or cutters or maybe both. But throughout your time here, you've avoided only one thing. You've avoided the arch. You've yielded to superstition and tradition. You've honored hope and faith and awaited the day when you could at long last
pass underneath the arch, stepping out of campus and into the world, and a brave new world it is. Graduates, I am here today to tell you that the world you're stepping into is closer than you think. The world that the University of Georgia has prepared you for isn't oceans away. It is right here outside this door. The world is right here. The world is right now. It is in Athens. It's on South Lumpkin. It's on North Thomas. And it's mere blocks from the arch. It is in Augusta and it's in Ackworth. It's in Atlanta. The world you're stepping into is right here in Georgia. It's right here in the South. And the world right here needs you to lead. We need you to lead us into the future. Let me tell you a little about my life journey because it's, I never thought I would be where I am. And as you sit here thinking about what's next, let me share with you some of the, some of the steps of my life to kind of let you know you can be all you can be. Stay hopeful, stay faithful, keep working hard, and good things will happen to you. I was born and raised in a small town called Greenville, Alabama, about 50 miles south of Montgomery. A town of less than 3,000 people in my memory and about 300 miles from here. Greenville was a cutting sew manufacturing town. Even before that, it was a railroad town. Growing up there, there wasn't much glitz or glam but something altogether even bigger and grander and even more foundational. It was a community of a strong work ethic. My grandmother did not receive a formal education. She made it through the, through the fourth grade, but that work ethic was baked in her bones. And she passed that work ethic on to my mother who became a school teacher and taught generations of students for some 40 years and ultimately handed it down to me, my family, we were proud to be part of that hardworking Greenville community. We loved our church. We loved the local schools, we loved our neighbors, and we loved the local businesses. But we also knew that Greenville wasn't perfect. We lived the imperfections every day, we lived the segregation every day. Back then, Alabama's constitution mandated separate schools for blacks and white students, and a dozen more Jim Crow laws were on the books laws bearing black people and white people from playing cards or throwing the football together or sharing a public pool. As we know, separate ain't equal. Segregation has never and can never afford equal opportunity. One time when I was, when I was young, my mother was very sick. So I took her to the doctor. The doctor's office had two waiting rooms, one for black folks and one for whites. Mother and I waited and we waited and we waited. She was getting sicker and sicker and the doctor never came. Finally, I said, enough is enough. I took my mother to the white waiting room and demanded she be seen. The, doc the doctor treated her, then got rid of the separate waiting rooms altogether. It was a victory that I should never have had to have been won, but it was a victory nonetheless. On that day, I remember and I learned what it takes to change conditions. It takes sound judgment to recognize even of the most insidious injustices. It takes clear vision to imagine a better future. Above, above all, it takes courage to realize the future and that courage must be relentless. It takes true courage to change the world. Even if your world is about 20 square miles, after I graduated from high school, I went off to college in Michigan, and after college, I went to Washington, D.C., there in the nation's capital. I worked in the throes of national politics, and as a congressional aide in the 1980s, I stood witness as policymakers who represented every part of the American political system debated legislation that would impact every manner of America. For much of that time, the control of the two chambers in Congress was divided, and it soon will be again. It took the courage of Democrats and Republicans to come together, but they did. During my time on the Hill, members of Congress on both sides of the aisle united to pass laws expanding civil rights and extending the Voting Rights Act and establishing a national holiday for Georgia's own Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. 
It was an honor to serve in Washington and a real thrill, a real excitement, but through it all, Greenville, Alabama and the South and the Southern communities were never far from my heart or from my mind. And for the last 30 years, drawing on that work ethic that I inherited, I've been doing my part to help Alabama and to help Georgia and to help the South be better. At this moment, you might be struggling to recall my introduction because it's been just a few minutes, but hopefully hasn't felt much longer than that. I am the CEO of Georgia Power, an electric utility company. We light up St Stanford Stadium and we light up actually this Coliseum as well. But our goal is also to ignite change. We are researching and investing in clean and reliable energy sources that will help transform our state and support our economy and all of our communities. And we're helping our own employees to volunteer and strengthen communities all across Georgia. Take it from me, someone who has worked the halls of power, both literally and figuratively, no matter what you do next, you can make a difference. You must make a difference. After day today, you will have two main spheres of influence, the professional and the personal. First, let me touch on the professional. You've received a world-class education here, and you are the leaders of our communities, the leaders that we need to solve our biggest and most complex challenges and seize our greatest opportunities. Prices in Georgia are on the rise, food, gas, even Christmas trees. I saw one lot in Atlanta where Georgians are paying some 30 or 40% more to buy a tree this year. Now more than ever, we need the economists among you to study the trends and help strengthen our markets and, and guide us through the, this economic period. As infrastructure in Georgia ages, we need the engineers among you to help design, help us to design an electric grid worthy of digital technology in a technology growing era. A grid and infrastructure that embraces the imagination of the metaverse. As children in Georgia make up for the lost learning they suffered during the pandemic, we need the education, educators among you to help bridge the gap. We need our students at earlier ages and grades to make career choices. Our students are up to a year behind in both reading and math, and we have to work we have work to do to ensure every child who aspires to walk this stage can do so one day. Whether your degree is in accounting or advertising, history or philosophy, each and every one of you has the know-how and I hope the can-do attitude to make a difference wherever you are. And when you do, you won't just be changing our communities, you will be changing our nation and you will be changing our world. Like throwing a stone into Lake Herrick, the impact you will make will ripple out, reaching places you've never imagined and people you have never met. But remember, your contributions also exist outside the professional, beyond the nine to five paradigm and your workplace walls. Your contributions are also personal. When I was growing up, as I said, my community was segregated, but today, many of the communities are segregated by default. Not just on Sunday mornings at church, has been consistently and correctly noted, but also sometimes at Saturday games and on Friday date nights. Every day of the week at coffee shops and grocery stores, in book clubs and bars, in the friendships and relationships that define our lives. Quantitative research in years past has shown that most Americans don't have many if any, friends of different races. Anecdotal evidence suggests that people gravitate toward those who share their political party or income level or educational background. Like attracts like, as the saying goes. I'm asking you today, defy the conventional wisdom, defy the cliches, break down the silos. If all your friends look like you and think like you, then by all means, widen your circle. Diversity has become a buzzword, but it is the basis of progress. The experts, including some of those here today, agree 
Diverse communities are happier, more productive and prosperous. Diverse viewpoints yield better results. But there's a catch. Fostering diversity, especially within our own circles or in your own lives, takes work, takes hard work. You must have difficult conversations and let yourself be uncomfortable. Lean into the discomfort, ask questions, and listen deeply to the answers. Educate without accusation and learn without abandon. And when in doubt, serve and give of yourself. Last year, UGA students like yourselves volunteered over 200,000 hours. That's how you strengthen your connections to one another. That's how you build community around you. That's how the world gets better. That's how you serve others. That's how you make a difference. Whether you were born in Georgia or moved to Georgia, you are a dog forever. There's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. When you walk under the arch today, you will not do so alone. You will do so together. But, but to go far does not have to mean miles away. You can stay right here in Georgia. And from right here, you can make a difference that truly goes to difference. Congratulations. I wish you the very best and great success. And I look forward to seeing you around the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Your words are most insightful as these graduates step out now to meet the challenges that lie ahead. Today, all of you become alumni of the University of Georgia. To welcome you to our alumni family, I'm pleased to introduce you to the 77th president of the UGA Alumni Association, Yvette Daniels. She has the distinction of being the first president in 41 years to celebrate with our alumni being football national championships, and she plans to do it again in a few weeks. <laughs> Yvette is a proud double dog who hails from Atlanta. She earned a bachelor's degree in political science from the University of Georgia and then a law degree from the UGA School of Law. She spent six years as an assistant state attorney in Florida and then joined the Georgia Department of Public Health where she is now the deputy director of workforce management overseeing university relations, employee engagement, worksite wellness and many other special projects. Her passion for policy, mentorship, and relationship building has guided her career, and it guides her service to the university. Yvette has served on the Alumni Board of Directors since 2015, and we appreciate her unwavering support of her alma mater. Please join me in welcoming our alumni president. Thank you, President Moorhead. Class of 2022, you made it. Welcome to the UGA alumni family. Now, let me tell you about your family. This is a family nearly 350,000 strong. And while each of us has a different story because we all have a story. 
We are all bulldogs for life. No matter the road you took to Athens, the path you may have forged on this great campus, or wherever your journey takes you, your Bulldog family, we are here for you. Take a moment, think back to when you received your acceptance email with fireworks, or when you gathered in Sanford Stadium to form the G on the field, or the spirit of a win on game day, and we've had a lot of good spirit this year, haven't we? Your Alumni Association honors those moments every single day by bringing alumni together year-round, worldwide, and lifelong. Today we welcome you with a small gift on your seat. Each bag reads, never bark alone, and we all know what that means, right? And it's true. When you leave campus, you'll find that friendships continue. Strangers proudly wear the G and greet each other at the airport. And you'll find 80 alumni chapters ready to welcome you back to your hometown. I know that because I know these folks because they are what? Our family. Even if you're going to an entirely new city. There are no dues to be a member of this great alumni family, and we are here ready to support you as your next chapter begins. We are UGA alumni, and we never bark alone. Go dogs! Yvette, we greatly appreciate your leadership of our alumni association. The support and assistance of our alumni are essential to our continued quest for excellence at the University of Georgia, and I hope that all of you will remain connected through the Alumni Association with the University of Georgia. All right, it's now time to confer the degrees on the class of 2022. As we begin the next part of this ceremony, let me take a moment to make a special presentation. Today is, of course, a very special day for all of our graduates. It also, unfortunately, is a bittersweet time as we remember one of your classmates who is no longer here. Ethan Cole Caldwell would have graduated this morning. We join his family and friends in mourning his untimely death. In cases in which a deceased student has made substantial progress toward fulfilling requirements for graduation, the faculty may recommend that a degree be awarded posthumously. I have accepted such a recommendation for Ethan, and I will now confer his degree. Afterward, I ask that you join me in a moment of silence in memory of this UGA student and his many contributions. By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer posthumously the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration on Ethan Cole Caldwell. Please join me in a moment of silence in his memory. Thank you. Several members of Ethan's family are attending the ceremony today. Please join me in recognizing them. Thank you for being with us today. Now I will ask Provost Hu to come forward to introduce the deans who will recommend the candidates for degrees. 
We traditionally confer degrees in the order of the founding of our colleges and schools. We ask our graduates who are able to stand to please do so when the dean of your school or college issues the invitation. Your degree will be conferred at that time. The Franklin College of Arts and Sciences, which was founded in 1801, is the university's oldest college. Dean Alan Dorsey will present candidates for degrees from the Franklin College, the Hugh Hodgson School of Music, and the Lamar Dot School of Art. Thank you, Provost Hu. The Franklin College of Arts and Sciences instills in its students an adventurous spirit of inquiry, a love of learning, the ideals of community and global citizenship, and the values of hard work and service to others. The faculty and I are confident that the Franklin College has provided these graduates with the skills, the knowledge, and the sensibilities that will empower them to make meaningful contributions to society. President Moorhead, with pride and with delight, the faculty of the Franklin College and I present the candidates for the degrees of the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, and Bachelor of Music. Will these candidates please rise? <laughs> by the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, and Bachelor of Music, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. You may be seated. The College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences was founded in 1859. Dean Nick Place will present the candidates for degrees. Thank you, Provost Hu. The agriculture and environmental sciences comprise a field of vital importance to Georgia's future. Our students are prepared to compete in a complex and demanding job market to recognize the global importance of agricultural and environmental sciences today, and to contribute to Georgia's economic prosperity and quality of life. President Moorhead, I have the honor, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences, to present to you the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Sciences, and Bachelor of Sciences in Applied Biotechnology. Will these candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Sciences, and Bachelor of Science in Applied Biotechnology, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Of pharmacy was founded in 1903. Dean Kelly Smith will present the candidates for degrees. The College of Pharmacy prepares its students to fight diseases and improve the health of the citizens of Georgia, the nation, and the world. The knowledge and skills that our graduates of the Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences acquire equip them to develop, 
improve and produce highly effective and safe medications, medical devices, and vaccines. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Pharmacy, I take great pleasure in presenting to you the candidate for the degree of Bachelor of Science. Will the candidate please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Science for which you have been recommended by your Dean and Faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The Daniel B. Warnell School of Forestry and Natural Resources was founded in 1906. Dean Dale Green will present the candidates for degrees. Georgia has the largest forest-based economy in the United States and is one of the top five states with the most biodiversity in our environment. Graduates of the Daniel B. Warnell School of Forestry and Natural Resources possess the knowledge and skills to creatively and sustainably manage our forests, wildlife, fisheries, and other natural resources for the benefit of humans living today and those who will follow us in generations to come. President Moorhead, on behalf of our faculty, it gives me great delight to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Forest Resources. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Forest Resources, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The Mary Frances Ernie College of Education was founded in 1908. Dean Denise Spangler will present candidates for degrees. Mary Frances Early College of Education graduates are equipped with the knowledge and skills to help children and adults, including those with physical and mental challenges, reach their goals in schools, on athletic fields, in medical facilities, and elsewhere in the world. Our graduates are passionate about helping others and leaving the world better than when they entered it. President Moorhead, the faculty and I are pleased to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Education. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Education for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The C. Herman and Mary Virginia Terry College of Business was founded in 1912. Dean Benjamin Ayers will present candidates for degrees from the Terry College of Business and the J.M. Tool School of Accounting. Today's graduates from Terry embody the best qualities of 21st century leaders, possessing the management skills, the analytical techniques, and the ethical standards to be successful in the global economy. The young people who graduate from TIER today are prepared to be leaders in their organizations and also to be leaders in their communities. 
President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the Terry College of Business, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Business Administration. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Business Administration, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The Henry W. Greedy College of Journalism and Mass Communication was founded in 1915. Dean Charles Davis will present the candidates for degrees. The Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication prepares democracy's next generation to protect our freedoms through responsible and effective representation of ideas, institutions, and individuals. Our graduates understand both the power of media to influence social change and the obligation to exercise that power responsibly. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the Grady College, it gives me great pleasure to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The College of Family and Consumer Sciences was founded in 1933. Dean Anissa Zonkovic will present the candidates for degrees. The College of Family and Consumer Sciences prepares its students to work professionally with individuals and families to gain an optimum quality of life. The knowledge and skills that they have acquired equip them to serve and to preserve our most important social institutions, families, and communities by the application of science and their expertise. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Family and Consumer Sciences, I take pleasure in presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Family and Consumer Sciences. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Family and Consumer Sciences, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The College of Veterinary Medicine was founded in 1946. Dean Lisa Lowen will present the candidate for degree. The College of Veterinary Medicine has been proud to serve the state of Georgia and the nation for nearly 75 years. 
by educating the next generation of veterinarians, providing exceptional veterinary care to our clients, and tackling the most pressing animal and human health needs. With modern facilities, incredible faculty, and a depth and breadth of patients and specialties, students receive the exposure and experience necessary to succeed. President Moorhead, on behalf of the College of Veterinary Medicine, it is my privilege to present to you the candidate for the degree Bachelor of Science. Will the candidate please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Science for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The School of Public and International Affairs was established in 2001. Dean Matthew Auer will present the candidates for degrees. Students join the School of Public and International Affairs not simply to learn about government, but how to govern. SPIA is a training ground for those who will serve others. The outcomes from that training shape the world around us as our graduates become lawmakers, diplomats, policy analysts, public administrators, and academicians who train the next generation of public leaders. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Public and International Affairs, it is my honor to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Sciences. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The College of Public Health was founded in 2005. Dean Marsha Davis will present the candidates for degrees. Through education, research, and community engagement, the College of Public Health works to improve population health, promote well-being, and eliminate health disparities across Georgia and the world. Our graduates are prepared to be effective researchers, teachers, practitioners, and health advocates who are committed to improving health for all. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Public Health, I am pleased to present candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Environmental Health and Bachelor of Science in Health Promotion. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Environmental Health and Bachelor of Science in Health Promotion, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The Eugene P. Odom School of Ecology was funded in 2007. 
Interim Dean Sonia Altizer will present the candidates for degrees. The Odom School of Ecology offers one of the nation's top research programs in the ecological sciences. Our graduates are prepared for leadership in fields that are crucial to ensuring a planet in which natural systems and the humans that rely on them coexist on a more sustainable planet. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the Odom School of Ecology, I am pleased to present the candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. The College of Engineering was established in 2012. Dean Dan Liu will present the candidates for degrees. Thank you, Provost Hu. Engineering is the science and art of integrating discoveries from multiple fields to create technological solutions for continuous improvement in the quality of life. UJ College of Engineering educates students to be leaders in the engineering profession by creating opportunities for learning, discovery and innovation that take advantage of our place in a comprehensive land-grant university. President Moorhead, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Engineering, it is my honor to present candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Biochemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Biological Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Systems Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Engineering, and Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Will the candidates please rise? By the authority vested in me as President of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I now confer on you the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Biochemical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Biological Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Systems Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Engineering, and Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, for which you have been recommended by your dean and faculty with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. College was established in 2021. Dean McAmstas will present the graduates who are also a part of the Moorhead Honors College. The Jerry W. Moorhead Honors College offers its students the personal approach of a small liberal arts college along with the breadth and strength of a major research university. Our talented graduates are lifelong learners prepared for leadership in their respective fields, and committed to rigor of thought, respect for others, and gratitude for the gift of higher education. Students graduating with honors earned a 3.3 honors grade point average and a 3.4 cumulative grade point average. Those with high honors earned a 3.5 honors grade point average and a cumulative grade point average of 3.7, along with completing capstone coursework. 
Students graduating with highest honors earned an honors grade point average of 3.5 and a cumulative grade point average of 3.9 along with their capstone coursework. On behalf of the Moorhead Honors College and our affiliated faculty, it is my privilege to present students who are graduating with honors, high honors, and highest honors. Will the Honors College graduates please rise? By the authority vested in me as president of the University of Georgia by the Board of Regents, I congratulate you on your outstanding academic achievement. Your remarkable accomplishments in your coursework across your undergraduate career merit this special recognition. Congratulations on being graduates of the Moorhead Honors College. Audience members, I present to you the class of 2022. Hold on just a, another moment or two. <laughs> to our graduates, you represent tangible and inspiring evidence of the wisdom and foresight of those who drafted the charter of the University of Georgia and thus began in 1785 the great American tradition of public higher education. You leave here this morning as the next generation of leaders of our state, nation, and the world. Whatever your future holds for you, your time here preparing for life and citizenship gives special meaning to the words in the university's charter that call on the young people of this state to be the rising hope of our land. At this time, I want to recognize two very important groups of individuals who have contributed significantly to your graduation at the University of Georgia. First, we are fortunate to have a faculty of exceptional quality and ability. As teachers, advisors, and mentors, they have been instrumental in helping you reach this point. Second, let us acknowledge the real heroes of this celebration, the family members and friends who made this occasion possible for every graduate. I would ask the graduates to please show your appreciation to your faculty, family, and friends at this time. We will now conclude the ceremony with the singing of the alma mater by Calissa Ray Hernandez, followed by the recessional. The words of the alma mater are printed on the last inside page of your program, and we will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. I would request that everyone remain in their seats until the announcement is made that the ceremony has concluded. After the celebratory video that will follow, please take note that there will be streamer canyon, cannons going off overhead to help you celebrate, so don't let all those loud noises startle you. Please rise for our alma mater.
after your first class? Was it the first time you saw the inside of Sanford Stadium? Or was it a thousand miles from home and you heard two simple words? Go dogs! The University of Georgia honors that moment every day by bringing alumni together year-round, worldwide, and lifelong. Whether you were a first-gen grad, Born wearing red and black. Being a bulldog is more than a memory or even a degree. We're a deep rooted community, centuries old and over 300,000 strong. As the birthplace of public higher education in America, we instill a tenacity that gives our graduates an advantage in the working world. Our family reunions embody the Georgia spirit. And we're empowering the next breed of bulldogs who will continue that tradition. So think back to the moment you became a bulldog. Wear it on your sleeve and join the hundreds of thousands doing the same. by the arch and the hedges, by Broad Street and Millage Avenue, and the sound, glory, glory. We are UGA alumni. We never bark along. This concludes the ceremony. Congratulations, graduates. Go! Woof!
Oh, <laughs> 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 